Welcome to the New Dad Podcast. We're back here with Dylan Cox today. Um, thanks for coming on. Oh, well, anytime, dude. Kinda, anytime. Kind of last minute trying to get you on here, but yeah, I had some free time, so no yeah. big deal. What have you been up to? Pretty much just working. I uh, just got off a turnaround, so I worked almost every day of February. Oh, shit. But yeah, that's about it. Nice. Where are you working at? Uh, so I work at Big West Oil. Um, I make gas and diesel. Okay. Do you like it? I do. Yeah, no, it's it's really nice. And uh, contrary to what Casey said, I don't just sit in <laughs> an office, and I don't make it hard on myself. <laughs> Punk ass, but it, uh, yeah, it's it's just a lot to learn. Yeah, um, and it's better to be out there learning it. And then after you learn stuff, then you can kind of simmer down a little bit, and then you're kind of just a firefighter at that point. If uh-huh. things are running good and everything's going, you just do your rounds, you check levels, pressures, things like that, and get your samples. But things hit the fan then you're climbing up and down stuff and kind of then you're freaking going at it yep oh, yeah and then you're a certified firefighter aren't you i mean i would consider myself like a great value fighter fighter <laughs> but yeah i i am certified um and then i'm certified in rescue too so. oh, wow. that's pretty damn cool yeah it's it's fun but I, I hope i never actually have to do it i was gonna say have you ever had to put out a fire there or anything uh a handful of things just nothing nothing big that's so. good just small, small issues, but yeah, I haven't had to try to save anybody. I did have to <laughs> help somebody out of a tank because he threw out his back Ooh. and he sneezed or something. But <laughs> that that, sounds awful. Yeah, but that was about it. Is it pretty scary? Some of that like <clears throat> jobs um, that you have to do. It can be. Um, there's certain chemicals in there that are are pretty nasty. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, things can be scary, but for the most part, there's a lot in place to keep you safe. Okay. And so I think if you, as long as you follow the guidelines that are laid out for you, you're going to be a lot more safe than if you go old school, cowboy it, and uh-huh. just kind of send it. Um, so, yeah, as long as you just kind of follow the guidelines, you'll think accidents can always happen. Oh, yeah. Something like that. But if you follow the guidelines, it's pretty safe. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what else you got going on? Um, so I'll be coaching Little League again this year. Um Last year, I coached the eighth grade. Had a blast doing it. It was arguably the most fun I've had coaching. Uh-huh. Uh, but they asked me to come back and take the 10-year-olds. So I'll be coaching 10-year-olds this year. Oh, yeah. And for anybody out there that knows Dylan, Dylan's not a dad yet. I don't know what's not, going on. Not for a little bit. Not for a little bit. Yeah. But, like, coaching Little League, you feel like a dad because <laughs> you yeah. feel like a parent to all those 30 kids or however many is on your team, you know? Mm-hmm. And I coached with Dylan, shoot, it was a couple of years ago, four, four or five years ago. Yeah. Coached some seven and eight year olds, and that was a struggle. Like it was, it was awesome and it was fun, but man, getting them to focus on one thing was kind of tough. It was kind of like herding cats. <laughs> yeah. They, they were, they were a lot of fun though. Like they're adorable at that age. They look like bobbleheads with the helmet on. Oh yeah. But yeah, the ten year olds a little bit older. Hopefully, I can get a little bit more technique in on it. But oh yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And then you said you coached the eighth grade last year. Mm -hmm. So what's been the biggest difference between the little kids and, like, the eighth graders? Um, Like, trying to coach them and seeing what they retain and everything. The biggest difference is with the the eight-year-olds, you kind of have to teach them how to do everything. You have to teach them how to run, how to take a hand off, how to catch a ball properly, like all of those things. So you're really focusing on the bare fundamentals. Uh Uh-huh. Um, but then when you get into the older kids and they already have a basis on those and you want to touch on them again to make sure they're doing things correct. But then you can start getting into deeper stuff like coverages and what techniques are like the two I, you know, things like that. But, um, you just get into more complex things. Like I was having so much fun with the defense, just throwing all kinds of stuff at them. Yeah. It was, it was a blast. I bet. How did you guys do? Um, I don't know exactly what it was, but when, so we were in, so there's the championship, the state championship, and then there's like a Ute Bowl, and then an Aggie Bowl, and a Cougar Bowl, and it goes like down the list of the colleges in Utah. Uh We were in the Aggie Bowl, I think, and we lost in the semifinals. And it was, I will take blame on that. I (laughs) kind of got cued on it instead of just pounding the rock like I had been, and I, he was open. We just couldn't couldn't connect. So I was sad. Damn. That made me sad. Damn. But 
Um, I think we ended up 11 and four. Okay. Something around there, but oh yeah. Yeah. What's, uh, how do you see, uh, or I guess, how do you coach the kids to handle like wins and losses? Cause like, that was a big thing is like when we coached, I'd see the little kids face, like get all disappointed when they lost and stuff. And mm -hmm. I don't know, as a coach, you kind of got to kind of rally them, I guess, so to say, to move on to the next week or next season. Yeah. I think it's important to, I don't know. It's, it's nice to see kids be disappointed because mm -hmm. it, losing sucks. Oh yeah. But it's all part of the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you just get better after you lose yeah. unless you roll over. But um, that was one thing, like, that everybody was really sad when you lose. And it's okay, at least for me, it was okay to dwell on it for two days. Yeah. And then you go on Monday, it's new week. Yep. And that's what I'd tell them. It's a new week. Let's get a better outcome this time. And then it, it, it'd amp them up a little bit and get things going. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. But, so, like, uh, just staying on the sports thing a little bit, what, uh, what kind of offense do you guys run? Cause like that's a big thing on like development. Cause the younger kids, you can't run some complex offenses. Kind of like you're talking about defenses, but mm -hmm. well, <clears throat> with my real green coaching staff, I had to go with what I know. Uh -huh. So we ran the flex bone triple option, mm -hmm. which is more outdated. But man, if it's run, it's so pretty, uh -huh. <laughs> and I I love it. I this year I'm gonna sprinkle in some more spread because I did we did fall short in a couple of games just not being able to spread it out uh -huh. as much as I'd like to, so I think going forward I'm gonna run the flex bone triple with like a two minute offense spread okay. where I can still run the ball from but it's what Kent's gonna help me with nice is uh, implement that because he's been working on it and so that'll help a lot. Um, I think flex bones awesome though, especially for kids growing up because it teaches you, it really teaches you not to be selfish Yeah. because if you're selfish then you're going to get smacked. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and it sucks for receivers and I know it does, but <laughs> we threw the ball. I think we threw the ball like maybe 10 times a game, which is good for flex bone offense. Like that's 10, 10 that's pretty good. That's how much we threw in like high school. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you, most of the time you'll be open because it's all play action. Mm -hmm. So I personally would rather catch the ball twice a game with one touchdown than catch the ball eight times a game with 30 yards. Yeah. So that's just how I would prefer to do it myself when I was a tight end. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. What positions did you play in high school? Uh, so, like, so, like, coaching is different because, like, if you play a lot of positions, like, I feel like you're pretty rounded off. But what mm -hmm. did you kind of specialize in? Well, I bounced around a lot. Um, played – Tight end a couple of years, uh, outside linebacker, inside linebacker, uh, defensive line. I think my junior year, I played every position on defense besides corner, at uh -huh. least one snap in varsity. Uh -huh. So on on the defensive side of the ball, I'm pretty well rounded yeah. until we get into corners and stuff like that because I never really dealt with that. Um, offensively, I went from tight end to fullback to left tackle. Okay, so yeah, pretty damn well rounded, you know. Mm -hmm. Has that helped in your coaching? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially with putting in that offense because I've played a multitude of it. And defensively, I've got a pretty solid grasp on it, yeah. especially in Little League because everybody's volunteers. Nobody's getting paid. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's dads that haven't played in 15 years, and <laughs> who knows if they've played ever. Their knowledge is all outdated. And yeah. So it it was a lot of fun. Um because I've never called an offense before until mm -hmm. last year. But it's like you just keep poking the defense until you find the weakness, and then you just run it. Oh, yeah. So, well, Did you have a lot of dads help you then? No. I actually prefer to not have dads help. Uh -huh. And that's just to make it so there's no way they could say it's daddy ball. Uh -huh. um, and I appreciate their help, and they can help on the chain gang and running the clock and all that fun stuff. But I just think it's better for everybody. Uh-huh. And I think it takes a lot of politics out of it. Oh, yeah, for sure. What about when you have a kid? Well, that'll be – I will uh, – chances <laughs> are with my body type, he's going to be a little fat kid. <laughs> so he's going to be an offensive lineman, <laughs> defensive lineman. It's just a guess. Um, so I'll coach not his position. Uh -huh. And so I, if I do need a dad to help me coach, he won't be coaching 
their kids' position. Okay. And that's another thing just to help with. I gotcha. Help with that politics and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Were you a little fat kid? Uh, yeah, I dabbled. Uh, <laughs> I think I wasn't an ex when I was eight years old, and I was an ex all the way till I was in eighth grade. Damn. So. Was it nice to get that X off the helmet? Oh, yeah. Because I know that's a big thing. Like, we went and played tournaments with Pot Warner or whatever it was called. Mm. There was no Xs, and it was tough bringing down some of those backs. Do you wish you played in, like, a league like that? I mean, it sort of, but it's it's hard with how small my age group was. Yeah. We didn't have, like, we had four X-Men. Yeah. And I barely was an X-Men by, like, maybe five pounds, Damn. ten pounds maybe. Like, I cut weight to make weight my eighth grade year, and I gained it back in, like, four days. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Some fighting fighting cut real quick. hmm Yeah. But, I mean, sort of, but with the weight thing, we we needed offensive line. Yeah. And I was not good. <laughs> I, up until I got older, I was not good. Because this dude's fast now. Me? Yeah. No. Pretty quick. I just, we play flag football, and he'll catch the ball and turn up real quick. Yeah, and then I have to come off for 10 plays to catch my <laughs> breath. But, yeah, this dude's quick. Well, thank you. Mm. <clears throat> what else did you play growing up? Played a little bit of baseball. Um, wasn't my go-to sport. I kind of just did it the past time. It was fun. I think the relationships you built in it were better than the sport itself. Yeah. And I respect baseball because it, it is hard as hell Oh yeah, to hit the ball. It's hard. Everything about it's hard, but I've just always been a football guy. That's why I never played is, you know, I couldn't hit the ball mm-hmm. really that good. So yeah. <clears throat> that was the tough part for me. But um, talking about sports growing up and, like, kind of how you want to raise a kid, you know, you want them in sports mm-hmm. or, like, doing something to build those relationships. How important do you think that was for you? Uh, outrageously important. Like, it's one of the best – things for a kid in my mind not just to build the relationships but to get that discipline that you don't really get anywhere else Mm -hmm. like my my parents were pretty disciplined by my parents I mean my dad was 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 the (laughs) disciplinarian so I got that at home but that's what just made me love football that much more like some kids have never been yelled at before Uh uh-huh and so when they'd get yelled at by a coach they would just shell up Shut so up and kind of I cry. Think <clears throat> that's important to notice as a coach. Yeah. Because I yell a little bit, but most of the time I'm yelling because I'm excited. Uh huh. Or, or I'll yell to get everybody's attention. And then if it's something that I really need to address, I'll pull the kid aside and just talk to him uh-huh. to let him know. I think, but discipline is huge. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a thing that football does very well because you have to be disciplined. Mm hmm. And a lot of football coaches do it well, and some of them are way too hard on their kids. Like, mm-hmm. I loved Clint. Clint uh-huh. was the man. You knew Clint cared about you. Um, and he was very disciplined coach. Uh-huh. And I loved that. I think that was really good, especially for some troublemaker kids to be involved with that type of thing. Mm-hmm. But then you have some coaches that you can just kind of walk over. Yeah. And that's not really good for the development of – especially – Teenage boys. Oh, yeah. They're going wild. So. Going buck wild. Like, I don't know. Clint was Clint was really disciplined, and I think it helped. Like like you said, it showed that he cared. Mm-hmm. So, like, I've always had the mentality, like, when a coach stops yelling, you, they stop caring about you. Mm-hmm. And, like, coaching, you kind of get that because, like, you're helping kids along their journey, you know. Mm-hmm. And once you kind of, like, they mess up, and if you don't say anything, like, you could tell they're tired of being yelled at. You're tired of saying it, and it's, like, kind of stop caring. And how have you felt as a coach doing that? Like trying to keep that energy and. Um, I think it depended on the year. Like um, it was hard to keep the intensity up with the little ones. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it is I didn't know the offense we were running. So it was hard for me to, to grasp it. So I was only like, I was helping as much as I could, but defenses was my day. Uh huh. Um, this last one, um, I was involved like throughout the whole thing. Uh-huh. I, I was really intense with a lot of things because, uh, like Clint would always say, uh, an inch one way or another uh, can make a, a touchdown or it can make it a three-yard loss. Yeah. It's a game of inches. And so you just have to gripe on that. Um, I was really involved this year, um, and so I kept the intensity up for everybody. Um, and it never got dull. 
Mm -hmm. Like it was always so much fun. Yeah. And I think, I hope the kids enjoyed it. I sure as hell did. And I know the other coaches did. So that's pretty cool. How talking about like keeping that energy up. Did you guys do like any team building activities? Mm, Not particularly like nothing outside of practice. Um, But we would do like, if we did a shutout, we get donuts. Okay. Or if we score 28 plus, we get pizza. Okay. Um, and then towards the end of it, after I felt comfortable with them knowing the offense and everything like that, we would play a lot of ultimate football oh, oh yeah. just to keep the energy up, get them moving. Uh huh. Um, I think that the kids really look forward to that. So that's cool. Cause like that was my biggest thing growing up is like, we do like the team building activities. Like we didn't know they were, but like every Friday we'd get pizza. We'd run like half, half, or I guess it was extra, like an extra practice, but it was like, we'd run like some plays just Mm -hmm. in our shirts and shorts, you know, like no pads or anything. While someone went got pizza, when they got pizza and brought it back, we would just have pizza and hang out and kind of just hang out as kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause like a lot of times kids go to different, elementary schools and stuff so it kind of builds a lot i think i think that was the cool part Mm -hmm. um do you think that's important to implement yeah yeah i think just anything that the team can do together is is really good um yeah i just it's not the great thing about football is you make lifelong friends like me and you uh i know i have tons of friends that it's all from from sports yeah and it's like like you said, lifelong, like we could not talk for year, two years and hang out and be like, Hey, what's up? Like, how mm-hmm. you been? Like, we're right back. Yeah. So I think that's the coolest thing about sports, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, we'd go to like haunted houses as a kid and stuff and you'd see which one of your friends is kind of, kind of some pussies or something. <laughs> I know exactly who that would be on my, my friend group. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Parker. 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 Yeah. Parker's a scaredy cat. Get called out Parker. Yeah. <laughs> is he still been uh living with you no he moved out but he works with me oh, so nice. we're on the same crew i see him all the time damn so. when did he start there november i think oh wow. that's pretty damn cool yeah same right after his dad retired nice. i hired him so i didn't know his dad worked there mm-hmm. yeah that's uh pretty much how i got on there was another neighbor that uh was there and so both of them helped me get on damn that's cool as hell i didn't mm-hmm. know that Good for him. Um, there's a lot of people going into that field nowadays. I don't want to say I started a trend. But you kind of did. Because so. what year, how old were you when you got into it? 21. 21. I've been there five years. Damn. Mm-hmm. You like it? Like you don't know regrets going into it? I can't imagine doing anything else anymore. Yeah. And even if something happens and I have to go to a different plant or something like that, this experience is just going to help me more, uh-huh. I think. I'll probably be there till I retire. Oh, yeah. Are you glad you went down this route? Cause we were going to school together, mm-hmm. college. And then, um, you had like plans to go down to Dixie and whatever, and do a bunch of different stuff. Are you glad? Like you kind of cut out of school and went down this road? Well, I dropped out of college twice. So yeah, I don't think I <laughs> could do it. And I will, I've been debating about just taking some classes here and there, uh-huh. to hopefully get an associate's degree probably not gonna do it <laughs> i just can't see myself going back yeah. to school i had already you have to do a lot of studying when you first get in to like my job yeah and so i've kind of just focused on that and now that i'm where i'm at like i'm a couple of moves away from being a lead uh-huh and then there's no reason for me to do anything else damn so like when you first started that's when we were coaching together and i'd see your your homework but I would think of it as, and that looks pretty crazy. And that was when I wasn't even doing anything. <laughs> that was <laughs> when I was just transferring tanks. Now it's, I'm helping run units and stuff, and that's way more intimidating. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Do you think it's a good job? Because, like, as new dads or parents or anybody, you got to think about having kids or whatever. Do you think it's a good field to have a family, like raise a family in? It's hard. And... It, there's a lot of divorces that come out of it because uh-huh. it, it takes a lot out of you. Mm-hmm. Um, but personally, I would rather miss a couple of things here and there 
and be able to take my family on trips that they'll remember for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. than be there for everything but not be able to do anything. Yeah. And I, I, I get the other side of the coin where mm -hmm. you want to be there for everything, and I don't have a kid yet, so I can't exactly talk about that. Uh -huh. But I think the memories you build traveling together um, will last longer. Yeah. But that's just, just me rambling stuff off. Oh, yeah. That's your pre-parental thoughts yeah i will see how it changes but i'm sure i'm gonna want to make it for as much as you can oh yeah uh, i think with how expensive everything is <laughs> having the money to have yeah. anything is uh more beneficial oh yeah and like you go to disneyland quite a bit and like take trips like that and uh i don't know like how has that experience been like being able to travel like having a job where you could travel because like i know you get a lot of time off Mm. here and there and you have the money to do it how has that been versus working somewhere where you don't have that extra money uh it's been awesome i mean uh my girlfriend's great she's amazing uh she's a flight attendant so helps out with the flights damn yeah that's that's a pretty good combo oh, right there it's, it's awesome and we we have a lot of fun traveling that's one thing that she wants to do and we should do more mm -hmm. it's just been kind of hard i bought a new house recently so trying to get that in line um it's expensive that's expensive I, <laughs> it's oh an yeah. expensive house um but yeah traveling's the best yeah. like I, I think i i haven't traveled as much as i'd like to but mm -hmm. i was i went to florida uh the beginning of the year and then texas just for like 24 hours um what do you do in texas for 24 hours i got a, a friend in texas so oh nice went and saw him and i got two friends in texas went and saw both of them and then Flew back. Oh yeah. Just played pool at a pool ball pool bar and had some drinks. It was a blast. Hell yeah. I want to go to Texas. That sounds fucking fun. Dude. I wanna go see Papa Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Texas is awesome. I I love Texas. And Louisiana. And and South Carolina. And South Carolina. South what's what's the favorite place you've traveled? It's tough to beat uh Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun like and it's a it's a city but it's like a small town feel because uh -huh. everything's like super old and i think they have a rule that they can't build skyscrapers or anything like that oh that'd be nice um and the the history there is so rich yeah. like we went on a uh buggy uh, -huh. uh what it was mule drawn buggy or something <laughs> like that and they were just talking about all the old buildings and stuff damn it's cool I went to uh, Myrtle Beach and I thought that was pretty damn cool because mm -hmm. like that same kind of like it's a bigger city town, I guess, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But it is older, smaller buildings like along the beach. Like, I don't know. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like you could tell there was big things going on there, but not crazy amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. Only thing I didn't like was all the old people. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of accidents that would happen every day. That, uh. So my buddy that moved to South Carolina, that's what he said, is that his insurance went up right as he moved there oh, yeah. because they're the, the worst drivers. <laughs> and while I was riding with him, I could see how they, they're they worse than Utah. And Utah's not great. No. But, yeah. Yeah, I'd drive down the, like, strip of the beach, and there'd be, like, two, three accidents along it, along the whole stretch. I'm like, holy shit, you got to be careful. Oh, yeah. But um, could you see – would you want to – raise a family in utah or any other state that's like a big thing that i think of i'm like damn like i could move to texas and like i don't know i think utah is tough to beat in my perspective uh i think it's really safe in comparison to a lot of states mm -hmm. uh, i think you have a lot of people that are going to be super nice to you mm -hmm. and it's like that all over the place but i think there's a lot of people a lot of bums and winos uh -huh. and other places that'll take advantage of anybody and anything uh-huh i think utah and i really like where we live like out here in this valley uh-huh just it's more yeah. secluded i mean it's not that way anymore because it keeps growing but it's just nice and quiet i think a good place to raise a family yeah i mean i'm sure there's other places that are but in my experience for a family setting utah's tough to be yeah, that's how I feel. I'm like, Utah, like, almost everybody you talk to is nice to you. Even if it's a fake nice, mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, at least you ain't trying to, like, yeah. you know, hustle me on the street or something. Mm -hmm. But 
like I've noticed that in Salt Lake. I'm like, oh, a lot of fake people out here, but you know. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, but um, so you live out in Tula County. How do you like that versus Salt Lake? Like, would you ever live out in Salt Lake? No, there's no chance. I don't. There's too many people, too much traffic. Mm -hmm. Um, Salt Lake's fun to go to Uh and do stuff in, but could never live there. And I feel that way about going up to Ogden too. Ogden's fun. It's wild. Have no desire to live there. I wouldn't want to live in Ogden. I wouldn't want to live in Provo either. I think Tool is <laughs> a good little spot <laughs> in comparison like, to all of that. It's like Ogden and Provo are two different opposites. <laughs> and then you got Salt Lake in the middle and it's all mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Tool is kicks ass for a ton of reasons. Yeah. The only thing I wish they had is more food. That is where they, they lack. More food, more entertainment kind of stuff going on. Because, like, it's building so much, but there's no supporting the the mm-hmm. housing, you know? Yeah. There's, it's not really a whole – I mean, we, we got a bowling alley and a movie yeah. theater. Yeah, like, I, I'd love to see a Costco. Costco would be neat. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A would do Buffalo well Wild Wings. Like, I think a lot of stuff would do d- decent out here, you know? Mm. But neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. But – uh. What was I going to ask you? What uh, what kind of – how would you want to raise a kid, so to speak? So in your field, like you have a little more money, you know, stuff like that. Would you want your kid to work for, like, stuff that he gets, or are you just going to give it to him? Yeah. I, I, I feel like I, that's a – it's a hard question to hit you with. Yeah. I feel like they have to do something. Like, they can't just sit there and play games. And don't get me wrong, I love video games. It's one mm-hmm. of my favorite things. But I still go to work and make money. Uh huh. So I think chores are great. Um, helping around the house. Like, if I have to fix something to be there with me. And I didn't realize this as a kid. thought it was a punishment uh-huh. to be with my dad to fix anything. <laughs> but then now you now I own a house and realize there's a lot of shit that I need to fix. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing that I witnessed it so i at least have some idea of how to do stuff uh-huh. but i think that's important for kids i saw a tiktok the other day that was like they give their kid a dollar a day for their chores and then have them budget it like oh, it, shit. i saved it and hopefully i can look back on it when i have a kid <laughs> but it uh i don't know it looked like a really good idea hopefully tiktok doesn't get banned by then <laughs> yeah i probably should <laughs> think about that then um but yeah, I think chores are important. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you're just gonna get a, a non-productive member of society. Yeah. That just doesn't want to work. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'm like, man, you gotta teach your kid how to work at a young age. Like, I saw a TikTok. It's all on TikTok. So parenting tips. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like, uh, you have one to ten years to like raise your kid. How like that's how he's gonna determine the rest of his life. And like. The first one to five years is like his like base, his basics and like his fundamentals and foundation of how, who he's going to be. And so like you're teaching your kid to help you work and do stuff when he's young, it'll kind of help him throughout his life. Mm -hmm. So I saw that. I thought that was pretty cool. But like, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to have my kid help mow the lawn. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, just do little shit here and there. Yeah. I think that's a important thing for kids to learn. Yeah. Are you going to raise him a Chargers fan or a Cardinals fan? I mean, fan? I'm going to let him pick, but I'm going to definitely sway him into being a Chargers fan. Um, is it is it tough to be a Chargers fan nowadays? It's so depressing. <laughs> it is so depressing. <laughs> but I, I work with a dude that – I work with two dudes that are Raiders fans, uh-huh. and I hate them. <laughs> I mean, I really like them. They're like my favorite people I work with, but I hate them. One of them in particular, he doesn't know anything about football, but he knows he can get me worked up. Dude, he was calling offensive linemen defenders. Dude, he pissed me off so bad. <laughs> He's just drunk the whole time watching the games. And <laughs> oh, he he gets me. And anytime they play, he just starts texting me. He doesn't even watch football. That, that bastard dude. <laughs> but it's it's fun, and I think it's really depressing because the uh-huh. Chargers look good on paper almost every year, uh-huh. and then they just suck. Mm-hmm. They get injured. Um, but one thing's for certain: nobody can call me a bandwagoner. 
That that's very true. So that'll be nice having a kid, and if they come become a Chargers fan, they'll probably still suck then. So <laughs> no bandwagoner over there. I don't know. That's how I was with Tampa. I wore I was a Tampa fan, and then they got good, and then everybody called me a bandwagon. I'm like, mm. they're like, do you just like Brady? I'm like I've been liking Tampa forever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. So he'll be good at getting like you know raised through disappointment a little bit. Yeah, I think it's important with sports teams. <laughs> Uh, to like my nephew's a Chiefs fan. Ooh, disgusting. Ooh, I don't know. He's not. He doesn't know what heartbreak is. No, that that's that's tough. You know, when they finally lose Mahomes or something. Yeah, he's not gonna know what's I can't, gonna hit. Him. I can't wait. It's gonna be great. I don't I'm know. Rubbing. It might be a long time, dude. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> I'll be excited to tell him when they finally have a losing season. I'll be like in your face. In your face. I know, cause like I was sending you TikToks after the Raiders uh, beat the Chargers. No second time. Yeah. It's always disappointing. Yeah. I I feel like people don't realize how hard that division is. Because, like, any team in that division could beat any team. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, the Raiders beat the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Broncos. So, yeah, they beat everybody in their division, but also lost everybody, I think, besides the Broncos. Yeah. I think Chargers lost everybody. They had a bad year. Yeah. But oh. – I went to their game in Denver. Ooh. I thought I did. Like, I was like, I don't really like Denver fans. It solidified my hate for Denver <laughs> fans. And there's a lot of them out here. And I hate Denver fans. <laughs> Who do you hate more? Is Denver or the Raiders? Because they're like the two home teams, the Utah, kind of, so to speak. So you see a lot more of them. Ooh, see, I would have said Raiders. But this this time I spent with Denver fans really, I think, edged them out. I think I hate Denver. Until what? I go to a Raiders game. But then everybody's just having a good time and being drunk and yelling. Where? In Vegas. Yeah, and it, I think it's a a good and bad thing that it's not in Oakland anymore. Uh-huh. I would get stabbed or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I guess Vegas, they said that it doesn't even feel like a home game. Yeah, I've heard it's more like an away game, like more of the away crowds go to Vegas because it's like a destination to go watch your team at mm-hmm. versus – it was the same for the Chargers. Really? The Chargers lost their whole fan base when they moved to L.A. Yeah, that's true. And going there, I saw way more orange than I saw blue. Damn. Yeah, it was sad. But so you went to both games? Both Bronco games? No, I just went to the one in L.A. Okay. Yeah, and there were so many of them, it felt like we were in Denver. That's crazy. I thought you went to Denver to watch that. So what, what made them worst fans? Because because we lost, <laughs> that was <laughs> Plain and, and they were just they were just talking shit and I couldn't handle it. We lost. Justin Herbert broke his finger at the beginning of the game. Oh, yeah, that's true. I think on the first drive, Keenan Allen dropped a touchdown. It was just just depressing. Just depressing. Yeah. It's like shit. Do you think? Oh, go ahead. No, uh, you go. Do you think uh, you're gonna get uh, season tickets to somewhere? If Utah ever gets an NFL team. I will get season tickets, and I will be a fan of theirs along with the Chargers. There you go. That's yeah. I'll do the same for a hockey team too. I don't even particularly like hockey, but I heard there was rumors that the Arizona Coyotes was going to come here. So if sick. they do that, I'll probably get season tickets for that. Hell yeah! Do you uh, go to Utah games? Like you, the very Utah? rarely. I love Utah. Um, sad they don't sell beer in their stadium. <laughs> so I'd rather just watch from the comfort. Yeah. Unless they're going to play in like a Pac-12 championship. Like yeah. I went to, I think the Pac-12 championship a couple of years ago against USC. Mm-hmm. I've never had more fun in a, a game before. The college games are where the energy's at. I have never talked so much shit before in my life because we were surrounded by USC fans and it was nonstop. <laughs> I lost my voice by like the second quarter. That's awesome. Yeah. I was, I was the fan that everybody hates Utah for. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, have, so, have you ever been to the Utah games, like of the Utes? Like, have yeah. you ever tailgated and everything? I didn't tailgate. That's where you I, went wrong. Yeah, well, I was I, <laughs> I was young. Oh, I, I didn't tailgate. I went once with uh, Kent and Yerby. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, I had tickets for – so, when I got my first house, um, one of the financial guys, he really messed up. Uh-huh. And so, I had to scramble and get a bunch of stuff done. And – for payback, he gave me tickets to the Utes. Damn. So I took Yerby and Kent. And we went. We got got a couple of drinks in at Bar X. Uh-huh. 
and then went to the game. It was it was fun. That's pretty cool. I think I can't remember who they play in Colorado. Maybe I think they're beating the shit out of them. But uh, next time you go, you'll have to tailgate because that's where you that's where you pregame, mm-hmm. and then usually you pregame so hard you're at the game, you're you're chilling. Yeah, you gotta smuggle some liquor into your stomach. <laughs> yeah, do it. let it you know the timer kind of hit down a little bit, and then mm-hmm. go for it. And like I don't know, I think like like you said, like getting season tickets or like going out to games, you know. I feel like that's a fun thing to do as a family. Like sure. my goal in the future is to get like a tailgate spot at the Utes mm-hmm. and just do that every Saturday. And then your kids around different people and learns how to talk to adults and stuff and mm-hmm. watches sports, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, you'll have to come to the Utah oh, game. I'm down for sure. But yeah. Anyway. Um what else you got going on? So really? That's about it. Got a anything with the house, like house projects. Um, I found a leak. My basement door's leaking. I found out last night, so I think I just have to caulk it up. Um, it's about it for right now. I need to save up a little bit of money and get new countertops. Ooh, but that's a. I was like, that's a tough thing. Like as being a dad or a parent or a homeowner, you know, like you'll look around your home and be like oh it's done for now and then you'll be like i need to replace these lights like i don't like these lights i need to, i need to paint I need to replace the flooring mm-hmm. so what what big projects have you done all i've really done is replace the water heater it went out when i was in florida Ooh, that's shitty so brady had to shower cold for a couple of days <laughs> um but yeah that wasn't bad i, I had to replace one at the old house so it's kind of knew how to do that um Really, that's all I've I've done. Um, I've got some projects for the yard. Oh, yeah. um, I feel like those are fun. I feel like I like doing yard projects more than like in-house projects. I don't like doing any projects. <laughs> <laughs> but it needs to be done. Like my yard in Grantsville wasn't even a yard, and this one's a nice one, so i got to keep some upkeep on that. Yeah, mowing and everything. Mm-hmm. So do you just have Brady living with you now? So Brady and my girlfriend. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Just those. Nice. And then the the basement's like my man cave. Oh, now yeah. I got my gaming stuff and guns and all kinds of fun stuff down there. Hell yeah. You need to have guns. Yeah. My like, favorite. Are you going to are you raise your kids to use guns? Like oh. know how to use guns and hunt and shit? Absolutely. Yeah. There's. It's it's fun and it's good knowledge to have. Um, it's nice. Like, especially with the amount of guns I have, you need to teach the kids to respect firearms and oh yeah respect other people's lives and their own lives mm-hmm. um so i think with the access of guns that they could have they need to be around them and know how to work them mm-hmm. so i know that's kind of like a hot topic nowadays is like having your kids around guns and like teaching them and stuff and i think it's safer to teach them like gun safety and like the importance of it and what it could actually do like to an animal or something Mm -hmm. so they're like oh shit like this is dangerous don't play around with this you know Mm -hmm. like i feel like that's an important part of like having kids and growing up you know especially if you have guns Mm -hmm. and we both do so i mean that's something that needs to be taught yeah because like i was never taught the importance of it like growing up or whatever and then i i had a buddy that got me into guns and building them and stuff and like you respect it so much more when you actually like build it and spend time around them i think is that kind of how you feel yeah, uh, I haven't really built a whole lot of my guns, but uh, I was always brought up around guns and kind of have to respect them. And the big thing is just respect the people around you and respect life mm-hmm. in general. I think a lot of people don't have any respect for anybody's life. I know. People need to fucking cool it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so There's fights that go on. You don't need to pull out a goddamn gun. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, I wish I could go back and live, like, in the 80s, like, mm. like be 20, 20 something in the 80s, you know, where you could just get in a fist fight and go home after. Yeah, and now somebody's going to pull something on you, yes. try to stab you or shoot you. Or... I know, especially nowadays. It's just insane. But yeah. um, one more quick question for you. Um, you coached high school football. Would you ever want to get back to coaching high school football? Like maybe when you like coached your son through, st- I would love to, but I would need to have a different schedule than I have. Yeah, 
I don't have the time to do it now. And if I was, maybe if I like win the Powerball or something, uh-huh. then yeah, I'd love to coach <laughs> high school again. But up until that point, I was probably just little league because practice three times a week and then game on Saturday. Yeah. Instead of, because if a lot of people don't see what the high school coaches do, mm-hmm. that you practice Monday through Wednesday. Thursday you have two games, Friday you have a game, Saturday you watch film, Sunday you have a meeting, and it's that all the way through the season. It damn. And like the amount that they get paid, I think we worked it out. It was like f- four or five cents an hour because <laughs> you've just spent so much time watching film that it's like it's not worth the pay, but uh-huh. it's worth it with the relationships you build and how much I love football, and a lot of the coaches love football. And the love the kids, and oh, yeah. everything about it. That's what's worth it. Mm-hmm. The pay is like nothing. Yeah, because like the relationships you build, like I'm, st- I still keep in contact with contact with Kent and like a couple of my other coaches. I see a couple of coaches at the gym every now and then. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Oh yeah. And like, I feel like that would be worth it. But is there any like schedules at your work that you could work out, like the higher ups? Uh, potentially. Um. I, I don't know if I want to do them because it's a different added stress. Uh-huh. But potentially. I mean, the only time will tell. Yeah. With me getting on as early as I am, I kind of, once I reach the, the top, which is called DCS, uh-huh. I can kind of just figure stuff out from there. But until then, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. That's pretty cool. So is it a 30-year retirement at a mm-hmm. rig like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe so. I should probably look more into retirement. I put a lot away for retirement, but uh-huh. I haven't really looked at anything. I just plan on working until I die. Damn. That's the game plan. Why? Sounds fun. Sounds fun. Do you have a lot of people that work where you work, like past retirement, work till they die kind of thing? Um, No. Most most of them, once, you, once they hit like 65, they bounce. Yeah. Uh, some of them, I, don't, I think if they weren't good with their money, they stay, but with the amount that I'm contributing to my 401k, if, if everything g- holds, uh-huh. I'll be I'll be solid. I yeah. could, I'll hit my 30 years. I'll be, th- what was that, 50 51, about 52. So see, that's my goal is to retire when I'm 50, 50 or 51 or 55. That's my goal. Yeah, my only worry is I'll retire and then just die. And die. Yeah. That's why you got to get a hobby. You're I getting know. better at golf, but we gotta. Yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> we gotta get you good at it. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. But I don't know. I see my dad doing that, and like he golfs all the all the freaking time, and I'm like, I don't, I think it'd be the funnest thing is to have a couple buddies. You're retired, have like a house in like St. George or something, and just go around try like do a tour mm-hmm. of like you and your buddies. That would be a blast. You know, the drunk drunk tour or mm-hmm. something. Oh, I'd be in. For sure. See, I, I I feel like that's the goal right there. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. You know, and then, like, your your kids or whatever could meet up with you at, like, some of the nice, you know, uh, courses. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to go out to Pebble Beach one of these days, you know. That'd be fun. That's the goal to get out there. I mean, I got to really, you know, refine my game because it is horrible. But I, I'd bring, like, a two buckets of balls because I'd <laughs> lose every time I hit, but. Yeah, I went golfing in Mexico, and I've never spent so much time in the sand. I spent more time <laughs> in the sand golfing than I did on the beach. Really? Yeah, I'd never got out. <laughs> that's that's shitty. <laughs> it was it was rough, dude. How was this turned into like a little bit of everything? But like, <laughs> <laughs> how was the uh, hitting in the like sea level air? Because like I golfed in Hawaii, and the air's so freaking thick. I'd hit like a, I would think it was a killer drive, and it'd only go like. 170 yards. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, there's a couple of things. My first drive, so we got a couple, we got a bucket of balls to just warm up. Uh huh. It was great. No slice, nothing. I was like, I'm going to kick some ass today. Uh huh. But I was pretty hungover. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. And then it just went to shit. After the first drive, everything went downhill. Yeah. I hit the drive and it was good. I hit a six iron and I was like, oh, I'm kicking ass. Like, uh-huh. I'm going to stomp everybody out. And my first drive off the tee box, I shanked it into somebody's backyard <laughs> so it just all went downhill uh i couldn't tell you how my drives were <laughs> other than they were shitty damn and like how was the grass there because like that's something i don't give like i watch the pga tour and everything i'm like oh come on like you should hit out of that rough 
But that rough in Hawaii was crazy. It like ate the ball. Like it was hard to get out of. Um, the grass was good. I, I'll tell you, it was the prettiest course I've ever been on. Yeah. Because like there was one hole that just overlooked the ocean. It was way nice. But and I didn't spend a whole lot of time in the rough. But I swear they had sand traps everywhere, <laughs> and so I was just in sand. They're just playing on the beach with little patches of grass. Pretty much, it. that's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty awesome. Like I feel like at those courses, you just gotta have a good time. It's more about just enjoying your time there. Because mm -hmm. I definitely shouldn't be on those courses. Yeah. But there's this one hole in Hawaii, and it's like the hole was almost like an island. Like there's like a little walkout to it, and it was on the ocean. That's I awesome. brought like six, seven balls with me to the tee box and just hit all of them i missed all of them but it was a fun time yeah that, that sounds like fun yeah but um yeah that was my that was my only question was coaching mm -hmm. do you think uh how would that yeah like coaching little league do you think you'd get invested into it because i don't know when you plan on having a kid but it might line up to where you retire mm -hmm. if you could retire and then coach high school would you do it yeah for yeah I mean, I love football. It's like a one of my few passions or many passions. I kind of been dabbling a lot with a lot of things, but football's like always been my go to thing. And yeah. I wanna be around it as much as I can. Uh huh. Uh and learn. Um so yeah, I could definitely see myself doing that if I was at retirement age and I had a kid in high school. Yeah, because that's what like a lot of people don't think of when they're young. Like, I, I wasn't thinking of it until just recently. It's like, I want to get a job where, like, I could find retirement. I don't know. Like, working towards retirement mm -hmm. sounds stupid to be thinking about right now. But I mean, it's it's not. If you can set yourself up to be able to retire early, then it's not stupid at all. And, like, you're one of the people that made me start thinking about it. It's because I saw you go to a, a big boy job when you were so young. And it's like, damn, like, I wish I was in that position, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it gets you thinking about what you'd like in life, you know. I I had a big boy job when I was 19. Then I had a not so big boy job when we worked together. Uh huh. It wasn't like I do now. Yeah. And then I jumped to what I do now, and it's I don't regret any of the steps I took along the way. Mm hmm. Um. But I do wish I like two years. Like if I would have been able to get into where I am now when I was 19, mm -hmm. would have been awesome. That but I don't know. Crazy how my outlook would have been because at my big boy job at Hexel when I was 19, mm -hmm. I hated it. <laughs> Felt like I was in a prison. Uh huh. But at Big West, I love it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just a different outlook or if it's just that much different of a environment. Probably a different outlook. I've noticed that as I grow up, like I look at things different. I look at hours and overtime different. Mm -hmm. Like now I enjoy overtime. I'm like, freak. Yeah. I'll take the overtime, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, what would you like to accomplish before you have a kid? Like, is there a hang up on something you'd like to get to a point in life? Uh, I'd like to be able to refinance my house so it's not so damn expensive. <laughs> but I think after that, I'm locked, <laughs> cocked, and ready to rock. So that's my biggest thing. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough I have the house. and Yeah. Uh, I would like to hopefully have a kid sooner rather than later. My parents are old. Mm -hmm. So I'd like them to be around for my kid. Oh, yeah, and, like, be involved in his, him growing up and stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. but, oh, yeah. I th I don't know. I think I think having grandparents that are around is huge mm -hmm. and, like, putting in the effort and stuff like that. Yep. So, I don't know. I'm with you there. Yeah. But, anyway, do you have anything else? you want to shout out anything? Nope. I think, I think I'm solid. Okay. Do you have a – we could cut this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I was say, you want to shout out your TikTok or anything? No, I don't. I don't, you don't post make a whole lot anymore. Damn. Uh, once I started gaming, so I got a bunch of got a new PC that I'm still trying to work shit out on. Ooh, shit, it keeps crashing on me at <laughs> random times, and I can't figure it out. And I talk to all the smart people that I play games with, and they're like, "Oh, it could be anything." It's like, "What? Well, that'll help." Have to rebuild everything almost. <laughs> yeah, so. Once I get that figured out, I'll start uploading stuff on TikTok again, my uh, TikTok gaming account. Uh huh. But until I start streaming again, I'm solid. Okay. So eventually. Are you going to be a streamer or just clipping? Because, like, uh, have you seen how much streamers make? Yeah. And that's always the dream, but I'm not that entertaining. 
I don't know. You're pretty entertaining. Well, thank you. If you just go unfiltered a little bit. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when I'm playing games. <laughs> I was raging really hard like two nights ago. <laughs> so we'll we'll see what comes of that. But okay. I think I'll just do it just for fun. Because it's fun to edit the videos and put stuff out there. And then you get the haters in the comments. And you're like, yeah. Dude, it's fun. I did it right. <laughs> I know. Like, I put out a, a short on YouTube, and someone's like, I fucking hate this song, and I liked his comments. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, dude. Thanks for commenting, bro. <laughs> uh, I put out one that was me. <laughs> I got. I killed, like, five people. Uh -huh. I killed them with sticks in Call of Duty. One guy called me a camper, and it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I I'm killed him stick. with a sticks. <laughs> and then I put a, a fire emoji and a tent emoji uh -huh. and commented on that yeah, got his ass yeah like hell yeah and like i don't know it helps when they comment so it's like bring on the haters mm -hmm. well um okay one more question all right sorry if you had a kid that's into gaming uh -huh. and his dream is to be a professional gamer slash streamer mm -hmm. would you be able to support it or would you kind of so it will depend on a couple of things mm -hmm. they can't only do that Mm -hmm. I would like them to be active to do something outside. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I'd support it. Like you really, I think you have to do physical stuff as a kid uh -huh. and not just sit and play games. And I sat and played games, but I played all these sports. Yeah. So that, I feel like that evened it out. Yeah. So I feel like if they're doing something active and not just sitting behind a screen the entire time, uh -huh. go for it. Yeah. Cause like they're making more money than lebron james is being like streamers and stuff mm -hmm. so it's like when we were growing up my parents like oh get off get off like playing video games you know like you'll never make money off of it mm -hmm. or whatever but now it's like ah oh, fuck i can't say that like yeah you never freaking know yeah and i kind of when i was streaming a lot i had like 100 viewers on one uh -huh. that was sweet and that's then, a lot honestly and i just fell off because real world caught up with me and i had to start working mm -hmm. um but maybe I'll get back on it. I suck at everything now. <laughs> That's, I was good at games then. Now it's I'm not as good. Now you're the old guy that gets on just to enjoy his time. Yeah, and I have little kids telling me to go raise my kid. And it's like, I don't have a kid yet, you little shit. <laughs> but. Dude, that's one thing I was talking about <laughs> with my friend at work is like, we played Fortnite when we were in high school. Uh -huh. Now you jump on Fortnite and some kids weren't even born when it came out. And now they're just running shit. And they kicked the shit out of us. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, fuck. I, I need to get off this shit before I yell. Yeah, dude, I was playing Rainbow Six Siege. It's an old <laughs> game. Getting back into it. Don't, and I'm playing on PC, but I'm playing with a controller, uh -huh. which is a huge step down. I get murdered all the time. Uh -huh. And it's young kids, and I hate it. Uh huh. I hate it. And then you hear them in the chat, and you're like, fuck. Yeah, make me feel bad about myself. I know, because like, I remember playing Call of Duty, and I'd play with some old guy, and he's a dad. I'm like fucking no life like go raise your kid like what are you doing you have a wife what the hell are you doing like playing video games you fucking loser yeah. and now now i have a kid and now i'm the loser. I'm a dad and <laughs> now i get on to play i'm like damn this guy was in trying to just enjoy his life and i'm out here ruining it yeah i'm like fuck. yeah that was my favorite thing about call of duty though is just talking smack uh-huh so you see that ai could go back through and see uh -huh. is that scary a little bit I didn't say anything that <laughs> I didn't say anything that bad. I don't think. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> That's good. But um, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Anytime, dude. But um, like, subscribe. Come back next week. See you later.